What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna do a before and after test on some thermal paste for your CPU. So the thermal paste that I'm gonna use is MX-4 from Arctic. And I'm gonna use it on this older laptop that I've got here. So this is a Lenovo T450S that I use quite a bit. And it's a fantastic laptop. It's a total workhorse, has been banged up, has just been an amazing laptop. Uh, and it still works great now. It runs Windows 10. It has a Intel CPU. Um, I think it's an i, it's a i5, uh, 5 series. So like a 5200U. And it runs pretty good. The only thing is it seems like to me that it runs kind of on the hot side. So I've been meaning to do this test for a while to see if I reseat the CPU. Well, let me take that back. I'm not going to reseat the CPU. I'm basically going to take the heat sink off of the CPU and then I'm going to apply this thermal paste and then see what happens to the temperatures. So what I'm going to do in this test is I'll go ahead and stress the CPU on this laptop. So I'll, I'll show you how that works. I'm going to use some software to, to stress test the CPU. And then while we're doing that stress test on the CPU, we're going to track the temperatures with the stock thermal paste. So with the original thermal paste and with the, the way the heat sink is seated right now, this laptop has never had the heat sink or the fan taken off. So we're gonna do that, we'll take that off, we'll scrape off the old thermal paste, and then we'll put on this Arctic MX4, which by the way was very affordable, it was really inexpensive. I got eight grams of it, which is a pretty big tube. Got it from Amazon, I'll put, I'll put the link down below. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put that on the laptop, on the CPU, on the heatsink. We'll put everything back together and then we'll do another test and see what the temperature is. So before I start that though, I just want to point out, um, this is kind of a really cool feature here. So on this, this tube of Arctic MX4, on the back here it has this Arctic authenticity check. So there's a little QR code there. And there's actually this gray material, this gray shading that's on top of here. It's just a scratch off material. So yeah, so just, it just scratches off and you can read the rest of the QR code. I need like a, I need like a coin or something. There you go, you can see that you can just scratch it off. And then using that QR code, you can check the authenticity of this um, this product to make sure that you didn't get a fake. I think that's really cool because a lot of products on Amazon, well, not a lot, but oftentimes on Amazon, I'll run across stuff that you think is from a particular brand. And then when you buy it and you get it, it's not quite right. Uh, especially happens with like cell phone cases and Seems like a lot of cell phone related stuff. You, you think you're buying a brand and then when it shows up, it's really not that brand. So that's a really a cool feature. Uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and scratch off the rest of that and try it and see what it comes up with. But very cool. So anyway, I'll put the link down below uh, to where you can get this on Amazon. And then we'll cut from this segment of the video, we'll cut over to where I'm using the laptop and we'll do the initial testing to see what our temperatures are. And then from there, we'll cut out, I'll do a video on us changing the thermal paste, and then we'll cut back to doing a video of seeing what the temperatures are after we've applied the new thermal paste. So be right back. Sorry, for those guys, for those of you that are interested, um, let me do a quick unboxing of this so you can see what this looks like on the inside. Uh, sorry, I kind of ended that video premature without opening the box. I did check the QR code and this is authentic. Again, really cool fit feature that it has here to where you can do a scratch off. You scratch off half of the QR code and then you scan it to check the authenticity of this product and uh, it is authentic. So really cool. Let's open this up and I'll show you what's inside. Always a struggle to film and open a product at the same time.
All right, there we go, I got it out. Um, so here's what the syringe looks like, the MX4 thermal compound. And pretty hefty. So I think that's a good sign because there's probably, to me that implies that there's quite a bit of metal within the thermal paste, which is what you want. I mean, you wanna have thermal paste, a thermal compound that's got some conductivity properties to it. So I think having some sort of metal inside of it that can conduct heat is probably what you want. So in addition, this also comes with a little, uh, I guess a little spatula here, a little applicator to use to applicate, to apply the thermal paste to your CPU in the heatsink. Again, this was really, really, really affordable. Um, I think Amazon's probably the best place to get ther thermal compounds um, or thermal paste. I looked at getting this at my local micro center and it was uh, way more expensive than getting it on Amazon. I'll put the link down below in the comments and I'll also put it in the description. This is a, uh, we haven't tested it yet, but from what I understand, this is, this is the thermal compound, the thermal paste to get. So this is your, uh, this is your unboxing video. All right, guys, here we are. We're now on the desktop of my Lenovo T450S. And so we're going to run a couple tests here. This is, remember, this is going to be the initial test. This is before we've applied the MX4 Arctic Thermal Paste. So right now we're just gonna run these tests on the stock original thermal paste that came on the CPU from the factory. And we're gonna see what temperatures we get to. So I'm gonna be using CPU ID hardware monitor here. So let's double click on that and run that. And so this is what we're gonna use to monitor our temperatures. So, Let's move this over here, and we just want to look at the CPU. So let me close everything else here. By the way, this is a really great piece of software that you can use to monitor the temperatures of various components within your laptop or your desktop computer. It's also kind of neat because it has the ability to see what the wear level is on your batteries in a laptop. So for example, this particular battery in my laptop is 19% worn, so it only has 81% um, of its life left. And then I also have a second battery here that is 23% worn, so uh, pretty good for a laptop from 2015. I, I think that's actually probably fantastic. But let's, let's minimize some of this stuff here because we're gonna focus on Let's focus on utilization, which right now the CPU is at uh, 20%. And then here are the temperatures that we're gonna monitor. So this is the current value, here's the minimum value, and here's the max value. So since we've started this, our max value has been 55, and our min's been 48, and now we're at 50. 50 degrees Celsius, um, just popped up to 63. So we're gonna be monitoring that and also monitoring the CPU utilization. So now we're gonna use another piece of software to actually run, to, to really put a lot of stress on the CPU, and that's gonna be CPU ID uh, or CPU Z. So let's double click on that. So this is CPU ID, CPU Z. And so here it gives us all the information on the CPU. So I was actually wrong. Earlier I said this was a 5200U. It's actually an i5-5300U. Um, so older processor. I mean, 2015, it's definitely, we're in 2023 right now. So we're talking about an eight-year-old processor which is still pretty damn awesome that it's eight years and this is running uh, Windows version 10, Windows 10 Pro with really no problems. I have no problems with this laptop, but let's go over to tools and then we're gonna do, uh, where is this? Uh, turn. 
I check for driver? No, that's not it. Over here, bench. Bench, that's what we want. And we want to stress the CPU. So here we go. So now we're stressing the CPU. You can see that the processor is at 100% utilization. And we should see the temperatures start to rise very quickly. So we're going to let this run for a little while. We're going to see what the max temperature is that we get to. And remember, what we're trying to do here is figure out the max temp that we can get to on the CPU using the stock Lenovo thermal paste that's on the CPU. And then once we've figured that out, we'll go back, we'll put the new thermal paste on, and then we'll go back and run this same test again, and we'll see if, if it makes any difference. Uh, it may not make any difference, but I'm hoping that we're going to see this come down lower, actually this max value. I'm hoping that we don't get to as high of a max value as right now. Um, the other thing we need to take note of is in addition to the max value, we also want to see what the what the value is when the CPU is just idling. So when it's just idling, we want to see what that temperature is and see if there's a if we make any significant improvement in that temperature. Uh, hopefully, we'll see that the that the idle temperature will drop down a little bit. That would be the most ideal situation. So we've been running this for a little while now, and looks like 73 might be the max. I know I keep saying how fantastic this laptop is, but for the CPU being at 100% pegged out utilization right now, the fan noise is barely noticeable. I mean, the fan noise is really, really low. I think Lenovo knocked it out of the park with some of these older laptops. Uh, I'm a big fan of the T-Series. I think the T450, T450S, the T460, the T470, I think all of those in either the non-S version or the S version, I think are all fantastic laptops. So if you're looking for an older laptop, I would definitely look into the 450s through the 470s. Um, either an S series or a non S series, really affordable laptops right now, and run Windows 10 perfectly fine, and will do most everything you want to do. Okay, so it looks like 74 degrees Celsius. We'll also have to look up and see what the max temp is, and we can do that right now while we're waiting, so i5-5300U. So let's look that up. Max temp on i5-5300U. So max temperature is 105 degrees Celsius. 105 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I, there's, there's no way we're going to get to that. We're at 75 degrees Celsius, so we're like 30 degrees away from getting to that. While we're waiting, let's look at some of the other temperatures. So here is the motherboard temperature. So that's sitting at 74 degrees Celsius, and our minimum was 47, so... That seems fine. Um, uh, let's see what the our solid state disk is sitting at 40 degrees Celsius, but I've never seen that change, so I don't think that this SSD really is reporting temperatures correctly. I, I, I think this is just um, I can't really I think this is just false information. We're not going to be able to use this. And then the GPU, I hadn't thought about this, but the GPU is running at 62 degrees Celsius. Not really, not really stressed out here, so the GPU is just kind of, kind of being used slightly here. Probably most of this GPU usage, this utilization on the GPU, is simply coming from me 
recording this screen capture because I'm recording it. I'm using um, OBS to record this screen capture. And so that's probably what what's stressing out the GPU right now. <coughs> so let's uh, let's close all these. Seventy six is the max. Hmm, interesting. Looks like one of the cores, core zero, is running hotter than core one. Um, I didn't think that was possible. I really kind of thought that both cores would be running at the same temperature. That's interesting. I'm going to go back over here and look at CPU. So this is a max of 15 watts. And we're not really hitting that max. Uh, that's interesting to me also. It does look like we've gone to 20 watts though. So interesting that it's, uh, it's just below the 15. Does it give us the voltage? Do we have voltage here anywhere? Yeah, here's voltages. So voltage, according to the specs here, core voltage of 1.106, which is what we're running at. I wonder if that's just if this is just reporting that value. All right, so we're at 77 now as our max, 77 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna take the, it says here minimum was 47. So we're gonna take the minimum as our being our minimum number, and this will be our max number. And what we're looking for is to reduce both the minimum and the maximum by applying the new thermal paste. Seventy-eight. Got seventy-eight now. GPUs at sixty four, max of sixty six. We'll take note of that also, and we'll see if it the thermal paste makes a difference in the GPU. The GPU is integrated into the the whole entire package for this Core i five fifty three hundred. This is a silicone power solid disk. This is a Silicon Power 256 gigabyte SSD. Obviously not really picking up temperatures correctly. Oh wow, motherboard is up to 75 degrees Celsius, high of 77. I expect that to come down also. I think everything should come down once we get some of the heat off of the CPU quicker. In theory, that's the theory. This whole thing may be an exercise in futility. 
Um, thermal paste may not do anything. <laughs> Alright guys, well I think I'm going to call it here. I think we're... I think I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I think 78 degrees is going to be the high, 47 degrees Celsius is going to be the low. So let's go ahead and stop this segment of the video and then we'll pick back up once I've got the laptop open. I'll walk you through replacing the thermal paste and then we'll put everything back together and we'll come back here and see what the test tells us if, if we've reduced the temperatures at all. Uh, see, I thought I, I thought I was going to see it pop to 79. Don't think it's going to get to 79. Come on, come on, come on. Nope, looks like 78 is the top. All right, let's go ahead and stop this. All right, guys, here's the next step in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and take the base cover off of the laptop. And to take the base cover off of this Lenovo laptop, it's a T450S. You're going to take the screws out here, out of the bottom here. You're going to loosen all of these screws. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's one below the battery here. So let's take the battery out. And there's the one below the battery. And then on this particular laptop, there is right here, There's a little plastic cover that goes in here. I've already taken the plastic cover out, but if you still have this plastic cover in here, and I think it's hiding um, an SD card sport, uh, port there, but if you still have that cover in there, you're not gonna be able to take the base cover off of the laptop. So make sure that you slide this little cover out and you'll have to use a paper clip um, to poke inside of a little hole that's in here on this cover that goes over this spot here. And then you can pop that out and then take the base cover of the laptop off. So that's already out there. And what I like to do is come around the sides here and just, uh, you can use a tool if you want, or you can use a credit card, but I like to just kind of get around the edges here. And I like to start over here by the battery. And you just sort of like get yourself underneath there. There you go, and find a corner to pop up, and then kind of go slow. Take your time here. And then there you go. The cover will just come right off. Okay. And so here we are inside the laptop. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fan off of the CPU here. So let's go ahead and, so the, the fan, here's the fan. And then there's a heat pipe that runs from the CPU along this little channel. This pipe here runs to the fan. So it's directing, it's taking all the heat that it picks up from the CPU. It's taking all that heat and it runs it over to the fan here and then the fan pushes all the heat out of the side on the right side here. And so we're gonna take this off and we're gonna use the MX4 thermal paste 
and we're going to put that on the CPU and then we're going to run another test and we're going to see how, how hot the laptop gets with the new thermal compound. And there's a little uh, connector here. There we go. So now we should be able to pop this right off. And so let me flip it over here. And I can show you this is what the original thermal compound looks like, which looks pretty terrible, doesn't it? Man, that looks pretty dried up. That is very dry. Um, granted, this is an older laptop, but I, I use this laptop on a day-to-day -day basis, and I, I did not realize that, uh, wow, and it's like, look at that. I'm guessing that's from the factory? Where, like... Thermal compounds like completely like not even on the CPU there. You see that? Let, let's clean that up and find out what's going on there because I think I think we're kind of off center here. Um, not sure what to think about that. Well, let, let's clean it up. So I'm just going to use some alcohol to clean this up. Let me touch this. Oh, it is it is a little. A little sticky, but still on the dry side. So here I've got some alcohol. I'm just using some regular isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. I'm just putting some on a Q-tip here. So maybe somebody can put in the comments and explain to me what exactly I'm looking at here because it looks like is there maybe two chips here. Turn on the light and see if that helps them. So, I'm not sure. If one of these is a CPU and the other one is the GPU. All right, 
let's get a little bit more alcohol on here. Clean this up really good. All right, that looks fantastic. So we'll have to clean this up next, but I'm a little confused as to where exactly this is positioned because if we look at the positioning, it looks like it's just position I wonder if this slides on here. No, I don't think it slides. Yeah, I'll have to do a little bit of research and make sure that that's supposed to be like that. But to me, it looks like maybe that's a CPU and that's a GPU and this appears to only be cooling the CPU, uh, but let's double check that before we put everything back together. All right, guys, so I, I did a little bit of research and apparently this, the CPU here, this one right here, um, is the only thing that has thermal compound on it. So I looked at multiple photos of this heat sink and this fan combo. I looked at multiple multiple photos of this on eBay just to see what this uh what this looked like. And I found several of these where you could you could still see the thermal paste on here. And the thermal paste, first of all, there was not a plate here. So there's no extra plate here to cover whatever this is. So apparently this does not have any cooling on it. So this, this heat sink and fan is not cooling this chip here. It's just cooling this chip in the center here. Don't really understand why. I'm not sure what this is over here to the right, but only this one chip in the middle is getting cooled, which I would assume is the CPU. And the CPU goes and hits this copper plate here. And so this is the only spot, if you look at photos of this heat sink and fan on eBay or on the internet and other places, only this area here has the thermal compound on it. So I'm gonna put the thermal paste onto the CPU here, and then we're gonna uh, go ahead and affix this heat sink and the fan back on. So let me, uh, let's just clean this one more time and get all the grease from my fingers off of here. It's important to have a nice clean surface. And then let's do same thing here. Nice clean surface. Okay. You're gonna let that dry for a second there. And then here is the MX4 thermal compound. And I haven't opened this yet, so let's figure out. I think we're just gonna have to twist this off like that. Yep. Twist it off like that. And I'm still letting this dry a little bit. Didn't know this was going to turn into an ASMR video with me making blowing sounds. Make sure this is dry. Okay, and I'm going to put a, I'm just going to put a strip right here on top of the chip.
Okay. That seems like a lot to me, but it'll be okay if we've got a little bit of a, if we have a little bit too much and it kind of like comes out the sides there. Okay, let's close that back up. Okay, and we'll go ahead and apply this. Like I said, it's okay if uh, we've got a little bit that sort of pushes out of the sides there, that's fine. This is kind of hard to do. Okay, I think I got that pretty good. So let's get let's get one started. And I'm going to try to screw these down evenly to the best of my ability. I should do some sort of like X pattern here. Okay, so there we go. I, um, I'm gonna try to come in here closer. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to see if I've got any that's come out. Um, it was a good application. Actually, you can see through the holes there, through this hole here and this hole here, that we've got some of the compound that came out on the sides there which I think is probably fine. Um, well, there we go. So uh, the next step here is I'll go ahead and cl close the laptop up, put the base cover back on, get the fan installed here. You gotta remember we have to put this connector in, which I'll do right now. Okay, I got the fan connector in there and fan just kind of sits here. Uh, it's not mounted. It's kind of loose there. So we'll go ahead and get everything installed. And then we'll run our, our uh, CPU test. We'll push the CPU to 100% and uh, let it run for a while and see what temperature we get to. All right, guys, here we are. I've got the laptop put back together. I've got the back cover back on and we have the laptop fired up and let's go ahead and see what our CPU temperatures look like now. So just as a reminder, I will show you, here's the screenshot of what the temperatures were prior to installing the Arctic MX4 thermal paste. So let's make this a little bit bigger here. So we had a minimum of 44 degrees Celsius a maximum of 78 degrees Celsius. So we'll see if, if either one of those drop. I'm hoping that we can get the max down a little bit. It would be nice to see three, four, five degrees less. And then on the minimum, maybe a couple degrees less on the minimum. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna keep this up over here on the right, and we will fire up the CPU ID hardware monitor. So let's fire that up. Okay, and let's close some of these that we're not interested in. Okay, so here we are. Uh, CPU's got some, I must be doing something right now because we're at like 14, 19% utilization. 
and our temperatures right now are sitting at 46 degrees, 49 degrees, and it looks like our minimum is 46. And our max right now is 52, but let's go ahead and fire up the CPU ID software. CPU Z. And let's put some stress on the CPU and see what the temperatures get to. So bench and then stress CPU. And we're gonna watch this and see what we get to. So remember last time our high was 78 degrees. This is looking pretty good so far. Um, I'm pretty impressed because we're at 100% utilization of the processor and this is not increasing as quickly as I thought it would. So 78 degrees was the max we got to before and that was prior, that was with the old crumbly nasty thermal paste that was on there from the factory. So if anything, if we end up not seeing a significant decrease in the temperature, if anything, it's probably worthwhile just to do this to get rid of the old crumbly, you saw how it dried up and it was kind of crumbly. It's probably worthwhile just to do that, just to get some new thermal paste on there. You saw how easy it was. I mean, there was just four screws and the one connector for the fan and you're in. We're sitting at uh, 66 degrees, just touch 67. Guys, this is looking really good. Last time we did this, we got into the 70s like right away. Sixty-seven. It's been a little while now. I'm, I would guess we've probably been sitting here for what three minutes now. I should have timed this, but at least a good solid three minutes. Maybe we're we're hitting the four-minute mark now, and we're sitting at sixty-seven degrees Celsius. Wow, that's incredible. That's so freaking crazy. That's 11 degrees Celsius cooler. Let me, for, uh, for those of you that still use Fahrenheit, including me here in the US, let me see, 11 degrees Celsius. That's... Uh, What's the difference on that? Well, I don't know what that equates to, but so one degree of Celsius
well, I can't, I don't know how to do the conversion to Fahrenheit, how much that is in Fahrenheit. But let's see, so 78 degrees Celsius is 172 degrees Fahrenheit. 172, so remember that, 172, and now we're sitting at 67 degrees Fahrenheit, I mean Celsius. So 67 degrees Celsius works out to 152. So this is 20 degrees in Fahrenheit, 20 degrees cooler. That is freaking nuts. Wow. And it, it's not moving up any further. And we're, we're pegged. I mean, we're pegged at 100% CPU, and it's not moving up any further. That is nuts. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the CPU here. I'm going to take the. Uh, I'm going to stop stressing it here. So I'm going to click on stop, and then we're going to see what the minimum temperature comes down to. We may not. There may not be an impact on the minimum temperature. Look how quickly that comes down. Wow, that's nuts. Look how fast that came down. So we, we may not see a minimum below 44. That, that may be an unreasonable expectation, but I am super happy with going from 78 degrees Celsius to 67 degrees Celsius. That is nuts. Look how fast the temperature is dropping. Definitely freaking worth it. I mean, and we're talking about a product that's only a few bucks. Remember the... I'm going to put the link down below in the description in the comments to where you can buy this, where you can buy the Arctic MX4 thermal paste. But wow, just incredible. Let's see if the temperature comes down. I think the processor is doing too much. Let's see if I'm going to close. Let's close this. Alright guys, well I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. Really appreciate you coming on this adventure with me. I uh, didn't know where this was going to end up. This is my first time replacing the thermal paste on a laptop. Again, this is a, a Lenovo ThinkPad T450S. Um, a very well used laptop. I love this laptop. It's been an incredible laptop. Uh, I've had it since 2015 and just is rock solid laptop. It works really well. It's not that heavy. It's still fairly thin. I mean, it's nothing like the current laptops, but still works great. So there we are at 44. 44 degrees is our minimum so far. I think, I don't think we're going to go below that. Especially with the CPU at 15, 16%. Alright, well thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you've done this before and if you've seen results like this. To me these are incredible results, but maybe you've seen something better. Uh, again, we dropped 20 degrees Fahrenheit in temperature with the CPU pegged, and, or we've dropped 11 degrees Celsius. Oh, there we go. We just hit 43 degrees. 43 degrees is our minimum right now. Alright guys, well, thanks so much for watching.